Hi and welcome. Uh, we have now come to the end of Proverbs uh, the devotional and you know I just want to say thank you to everyone who participated in this. Oh, what a wonderful series this has been and I hope that each and every one of you uh, that have followed, that have enjoyed every single one of them, we've had some great speakers and uh, it's been just fantastic and been brilliant. Um, but I'm now going to end off Proverbs with Proverbs 31 and of course to end off Proverbs uh, 31 we're also ending off January and we're walking into February. And I'm excited, you know, uh, to think what God is going to do in February, um, that what's going to happen over the next couple of months as we uh, gradually start to get some normality, I hope, again soon. Um, but yeah, let's focus on Proverbs 31. So yeah, take some time out and read the whole of the Proverbs. But we're going to be mainly talking about the woman of noble character. And wow. There's some stuff in there <laughs> and that's fine. You know, I, I I felt really, really strongly to say to you all, you don't have to be Proverbs 31 wife or even a man who strives to be um, like that. But I think what, what Proverbs 31 is trying to say is that we can be um, like that. We can strive to be like that. Is what I mean. So this is such an encouraging chapter, but also very compelling. And that is good because it is something to aspire to. And I don't think it is just for women. We can all strive to be the best we can be. Okay, so the best version of me, the best version of you. What is the best version? And and just take some time out and just think about that because, you know, God has created you to be the best version that you can be. And that may take years. That may take many, many years. Um, but as we move closer to God, we'll move closer to the goal that God has for us. And that's the most important thing is that we're always moving forward. So I want to glean off a couple of things that I've pulled out of Proverbs 31. And I hope that you're going to enjoy this message. I really do. And I'm just going to pray just to start us off, just uh, to give it over to the Lord. So Lord, I just want to thank you for the word that you've given me. I want to ask you right now to just uh, touch the people that are listening to this message. In Jesus' name, Amen. So, one, do not put yourself in a box. So one of the biggest things I want to say to you today is that God is not in a box. And so don't put yourself in a box. Let me say that again. God is not in a box. So don't put yourself in a box. Okay. It is so important we don't shut ourselves off from everything that God wants us to be because of fear and hurts. I think for me, one of the biggest things that stops us in our track is either fear or hurt. You've been hurt by someone, uh, hurt of something, or you've got fear um, that then produces um, anger and all these other things that come in. And I just want to say to you right now that don't put yourself in a box, because that's what the enemy wants. He wants you to be put in a box. Um, because there you cannot be used. But that's the most important thing. Do not put yourself in a box. It is so important that we don't shut ourselves off from everything that God wants us to be because of fear and hurts. As I said before, do not let it control you. It is probably one of the easiest things to do is to put ourselves down because of fear not push forward and get what Jesus wants for us. So we tend to fall back than push forward. Press in forward takes effort, takes us believing in ourselves sometimes. 
And sometimes it's just easier to fall back and say, do you know what, and leave someone else do it. And that is not what we should be doing. We should be pushing forward and we should be doing what God has called us to do. I am reminded of a story of the lady with the issue of blood. So let's read it. It's in eight, Luke 8 verse 43. So I'm going to get my Bible. Let's go there quickly. Luke 8 verse 43. So it says in uh, this passage, And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. And immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you, but Jesus says, someone touched me. I know that the power has gone out from me. And the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. (laughs) Wow, that's amazing. And you know, what a powerful look into a woman who wouldn't give up. Okay, who wouldn't give up. A woman who said, this is not the way my life is meant to be. And I am worth, I am worth more than this. And I am not going to stop until I see my victory over my circumstances. I think for me, this is exactly what we need to do. Is learn to keep fighting, keep getting up. In the morning saying, I am more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens me. Which is in Romans 8 verse 37, just so you know. And it is absolutely right. We need to get up and keep moving forward. Keep saying, God, I'm going to let you do what needs to be done in my life. What is your box today? And this is men and women. I want you to hear this, men. This is you as well, because we we all, as human beings, do this. So what is your box today? What is it that you hide in when things get tough so you don't have to face real life? What is your box that chains you and keeps you bolted in one place, never moving forward, never getting up? What is your box where you see only the past and never see that God may be doing a new thing in your life today? What is your box? I ask you now to in your mind's eye to see that box. Close your eyes and see that box. And be honest with yourself. Don't hide from it. It is the thing that has held you down for far too long. Held your heart captive. So take it seriously. See your box. Feel it. Understand it. Realise why it has kept you down for so long. Now just step out of it. In your mind's eye, just step out of that box. It no longer holds you. It no longer chains you. Do you see it? It doesn't have... No hold on you anymore. You have been set free. Jesus paid the price. And it is it is that easy. Just step 
out of the box. See your victory as you touch the hem of Jesus' garment. And he turns and says, your faith has made you whole. The Proverbs woman is not inaccessible. It really isn't. Open your eyes and realise that you have got the power. You have got the power to step out of that box, out of those chains, out of that past experiences. You can step out of it today. As Esther found out, she was born for such a time as this. And so are you. You are here and God wants you and loves you. And he has so much more for your life than what you are seeing right now. Believe it because it is there. Just get out of that box. Stop allowing that box to chain you. Number two, look forward, not backwards. How many times have you heard this been preached in a sermon? I've heard it loads of times. I've preached it myself loads of times. Don't look back, always look forward. <laughs> so why is it so hard, so bad to look backwards? Well, it isn't looking back at a glance that's a problem <laughs> it is very important of course to look back and remember the things that God has done in your life and yes the good and obviously looking back at the bad in a way of saying right this is how God has changed my life this is how God has made me get to this place and that is important and that is really really good but where it is bad is when we live in it, when we live in the past, when we stay shackled by the past. You see, God has saved us, helped us and given us joys abundantly. So when we look back, we look back and see that God has done that. But what we do not want to do is we do not want to live in the past when we cannot move forward, where we cannot move into what God has prepared for us. When the past becomes a shackle around our neck that is trying to strangle us, that is when it is so important that we stop and we do not carry on that path. There are so many verses to help back up this. So I'm going to speak a few of them. So here we are. Isaiah 43 verse 18 to 19 says, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Luke 9 verse um, 6 says, Jesus said to him, no one, puts, no one who puts his hand to the plough and looks back is fit for the kingdom. Romans 13 verse 12 says, the night is far gone, the day is at hand, so then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 10 says, Say not why were the former days better than these, for it is not for, from wisdom that you ask this. And Philippians 3 verse 13 to 14 says, Brother, I do not consider that I made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. It is so important that we only use the past as a pointer to the next thing that God has for us. 
as we saw in the first verse just and um, that I just read um and where it said God is doing a new thing now that it springs up can you not perceive it when we are living in the past we cannot perceive it because we are strangled by the past you see the proverbs woman um, was always striving to go forward to better herself she could um she was only willing to strive to go forward each day always moving forward and that is what we should be doing always moving forward to what god is giving us next not living in the past only looking back as a pointer for what we are going to receive in our future number three speak life not death when we look at ourselves in the mirror what do we see what are we saying to ourselves i think that we are our worst critics i can be so harsh with myself the amount of times i look at myself and i think you, you know you know good you can't do this you can't do that and i can be so harsh and a lot of that comes from anxiety a lot of that comes from hurt and pain and as i just said from the past from what people have said and um, this that's made me think that i can't be the person that god has called me to be the past can haunt your mind speaking over it death allowing fear to come in and then to go out of our mouths instead of courage you know we are so critical of ourselves close your eyes how do you see yourself is it good or is it bad now look at jesus and what do you think he thinks of you? Open your eyes. Well, I'll tell you exactly what he thinks of you. You are loved. John 3, 16. You are his. 1 John 3, verse 1. You are worthy. Sephaniah 3 for 17. And you are purposed. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. That is what he thinks of you. You are precious. You are born for his glory. You are his child. So don't let death quotes that you may say to yourself prevail. Stop saying bad to yourself and start saying life quotes and good over yourself. Allow the words of God and what he thinks of you emanate in your heart. You are beautiful. You are worth it. You are going to get through this. You are his child. You are a fighter. You are special. You are doing okay. I think when we see that, when we see that God loves us with all of his heart and we stop speaking death over ourselves and we start breathing life over ourselves, and we'll start to see that um, we can make this and we can do this and we can be called and that we can be purposed and that we can do what God has called us to do. I think that that's one of the biggest things is security. I found it so uh, beautiful about the way that Proverbs 31's uh, woman is 
she is so secure and that is what we should be we should be secure in our father number four says be who god called you to be so here we are at the end of this word (laughs) and i want to end it off with let us be who god has called us to be Don't let the enemy keep you down. You are a king's kid. You are more than a conqueror. You are a fighter. You are precious and worth so much more than what your eyes are seeing right now. Be proactive. Take charge. Don't just think that this is a good word. Oh, well done, Claire. Great word. And then carry on as if nothing has been said you see jesus is speaking to you he wants you to hear this you are more than a conqueror you are a fighter you are going to move on and you are going to be bigger and you're going to be better do not put yourself in a box and don't speak death over your life because you are his child Don't let the enemy keep you down. You are a king's kid. Hear that. You are a king's kid. That means we have everything the king has. He is our father. You are um, his co-heir. Believe it. So... I'd like you to proclaim this song over your life. And I'm going to read the whole song out to you. And I'm really excited about you hearing this song. And I'm going to put it on afterwards onto the site. Um, But if you want to know um, what it is, it's uh, The Highest King by Hillsong. Um, But it is so important that we hear this. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. He is free indeed. I am a child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last, he has ransomed me. His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. I am a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I am a child of God. Yes, I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am, who the Son set free. He is free indeed. I am a child of God. Yes, I am. And there we are. You are a child of God. You were chosen. You are not forsaken. You are going to make this life your own you're gonna be what god has chosen you to be and using the proverbs wife men and women we can look at it and we can see it that yes it looks inaccessible oh my goodness i'm not this i'm not that i'm not the other but we can get there with god's help we can move forward you see we're always moving to a new level never going backwards If we're going backwards, we're probably doing something wrong. God has got something for your life. And I promise you that if you go to him, he will tell you. 
Lord, I just want to thank you so much for just being with us. I just want to thank you so much that you have chosen us, that the Proverbs wife shows us the one thing is that we can always strive to be better than we are today. So, Lord, I just pray that you would just guide us, you would help us, and that we will be excited about what you're going to do over the next couple of months as we're walking into um, better times. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, I hope that's gra uh, that's um, ended off Proverbs for you nicely. And I'm excited to see what uh, Day Pastor Dale is going to do next and we will see so god bless you all thank you so much for listening speak to you soon